Let me share with you a Japanese ghost story. It's called Miminashi Hoichi, and it's one of my favorites. The original was a classic Japanese mythology called Miminashi Hoichi, and the English version was written by Lafcadio Hearn, who is most famous for his Japanese ghost stories. He was a Greek writer that um, lived in Japan, and I uh, hope you like it. Mukashi Mukashi, long, long ago. There was a gifted musician named Hoichi. His skill at playing the biwa, a lute-like string instrument, while reciting poems and stories was legendary. And although Hoichi was blind, it did not seem to impede his playing. In fact, it is said that his playing was so good, he could make demons weep. Hoichi lived at a Buddhist temple with a kind priest who had taken him in. In exchange for a place to live and food to eat, Hoichi would entertain the priest with poetry and music. One night, the priest had to leave the temple to attend to a funeral. Left alone, Hoichi decided to sit outside and practice playing the biwa. After playing for a little while, he heard his name being called. Hoichi. Hello? Who is that? Hoichi asked the knight. The voice called again, louder this time. Hoichi. Uh, I'm sorry. I am blind. I cannot see who you are. The voice was very near now and very loud. Hoichi! Hoichi! At this point, Hoichi was very afraid. Please don't hurt me, he cried. I'm just a simple musician. The gruff voice said to him, don't be afraid. I am a samurai. My lord has heard that you are skilled at reciting the story of the Battle of Dan no Ura. He requests that you come and play for him at his court. The Battle of Dan no Ura was the final battle of a long war fought between the Heike and Genji clans more than 800 years ago. The Heike lost, many of the clan perishing in the ocean. A defining image of the battle is the mother of the infant emperor, clutching her child as she falls from a seaside cliff. Amidaji, the temple where Hoichi lived, was erected to make amends to the ghosts of the Heike. It was said that the Heike ghosts haunted the ocean and coastline, rising up to try and pull down ships, appearing as balls of fire on the beach, or as crabs with human faces on their shells, the spirits of the Heike warriors. The story of the Battle of Dan no Ura was Hoichi's specialty. Plus, who was he to say no to a samurai? I will gladly play for your lord, Hoichi told the samurai. Taking Hoichi by the arm, the samurai swiftly led him through many twists and turns to the court of his lord. Upon arriving, Hoichi could hear lots of people around him. The swish of sandals, voices muttering, the flap of fans. Sitting down on the cushion offered to him, he waited for instructions. A woman's voice, the head attendant of the Lord, said, Play your biwa, Hoichi, and recite the story of the Battle of Dan no Ura. As you wish, Hoichi replied, and began to play. After he had played the final chord, the court was silent. Hoichi waited for any response. Out of the silence, the woman's voice said, you are wonderfully skilled, Hoichi, and have pleased our Lord very much. He requests that you come back and entertain the court 
for the next six nights, after which you will be given a fitting reward. However, you must not tell anyone about this, or you will be punished. As you wish, Hoichi agreed. Hoichi was brought to his feet by the samurai's hand, and after many twists and turns, was returned to the temple. It was nearly dawn when Hoichi arrived home, and he collapsed from exhaustion. The priest returned shortly after Hoichi, and seeing that Hoichi was sleeping, suspected nothing. The next night, the samurai came to collect Hoichi again. Hoichi again played all night for the court, and again he was returned to the temple just before dawn. However, this time, the priest saw Hoichi returning. Hoichi, I was so worried about you. Where did you go? I cannot tell you. I had business to attend to, Hoichi replied, and he went to sleep for the day. Surprised that Hoichi was so evasive, the priest decided to keep an eye on him. When night fell, the priest saw Hoichi leave the temple grounds and sent servants to follow him. Yet the blind man took so many twists and turns that they lost track of him. They were about to give up when they heard Hoichi's biwa in the dark. Following the sound of the biwa, they found Hoichi alone in the cemetery, sitting in front of a tomb dedicated to the infant Heike Emperor. Surrounding Hoichi were spirit fires, ghosts of the Heike clan. Hoichi! Hoichi! The servants called. But Hoichi was in a trance, unable to hear them. Grabbing him, the servants pulled him out of the cemetery and brought him back to the temple where they explained to the priest what had happened. When Hoichi came out of his trance and was confronted by the priest, he tearfully admitted what he'd been doing. My friend, said the priest, you have been tricked by the ghosts of the Heike. You have been performing for the dead every night. You are now under their power, and after the sixth night, they will take your soul. Of course, now that the truth has been discovered, they will punish you, unless... The priest gathered his writing brushes and ink. Removing Hoichi's clothes, the priest wrote sacred texts all over Hoichi's body even the soles of his feet. Now, Hoichi, go sit outside and wait for the samurai to come and collect you, like he usually does. Only this time, when he calls to you, stay absolutely still and do not make a sound. Hoichi did as he was told and sat outside, waiting for the samurai. After many hours, he heard the samurai call his name. Hoichi! Hoichi! Hoichi did not move, did not utter a word. He heard the samurai getting closer and closer. Hoichi! The samurai called. He was standing right next to Hoichi now but the sacred texts written all over his body made him invisible to the samurai. Where are you, Hoichi? My lord awaits for you. Hoichi listened to the heavy footfalls of the samurai circling him, walking around the temple grounds. Where are you, Hoichi? The samurai was right next to his ear. Hmm. What's this? I only see two ears and a biwa. 
Hoichi suddenly realized that the priest had forgotten to write sacred texts on his ears. I will take these to show my lord that I tried to carry out his orders, but could find nothing but the Biwa player's ears. And with that, the samurai ripped Hoichi's ears from his head. Hoichi was in horrible pain, but he did not move or cry out until he no longer heard the samurai. The priest rushed to his side, and upon seeing Hoichi's bloody wounds, berated himself for such an oversight. But in time, Hoichi did heal, and the spirits never troubled him again. And from that night on, Hoichi was known as Mimi Nashi Hoichi. Hoichi the Earless. Well, hey, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the story. That was Mimi Nashi Hoichi uh, by Lefkadio Hearn. That was the abridged version. There's a much longer one, and maybe I'll read that at another point. Um, but in the meantime, send me your letters. Send me your prose, your poetry, your whatever. And I'll read it and try to make it into something fun. I'm a voice actor for a living. I get paid to read scripts, but I'll read yours for free. Just click the subscribe button. And click the bell so you get my videos instantaneously. Okay? Let's have fun. All right. And now I'm in the woods. And what else do you do in the woods besides make fires and s'mores and like roast weenies and um, what else? Listen to bugs and birds chirp and bears growl. And maybe we'll see Hoichi. Or at least his spirit between the trees in the woods up here. <laughs> Tree out. <laughs>